I mean, we've done well this morning. We've had a whole hour and five minutes without mentioning the NHR on a on a program about Portugal. Um, I mean, it, it, it's what impacts things right now. So it's, it's some of the some of the biggest plays of videos we've had in the last week have been the ones about the NHR. You know, we're we're, we're having fun talking about all the things we love about Portugal, and that those get a few views, and then you put something about the NHR, and it's hundreds and hundreds of views. People are desperate for information about it. Um, yeah. No question, and. Um, it's, it's sad in a way and also understandable that people are changing their plans. And that's a shot in the foot, isn't it? If people choose not to move to Portugal because of its scrapping, uh, would you see that as a loss socially and politically and economically, Vitor? I would. I would because one thing, either politicians don't know this or they know this but don't care because they want votes. Yeah. Um, you know, the money we use, like the euro, the dollar, it's not really money, it's a currency. Yes, and currency comes from current, and like an electrical current, it only uh, has any value if it's circulating, yes. right? So, it's that circulation of money that makes things worthwhile, right? Yeah. So, people come in here. Portugal is a very touristic country. Um, you know, people come here. They they use a Portugal. They bring their money here, and it just circulates. Now, yes. what happens is that. Um, at the moment, with the NHR, like let's say you're in America and you're paying maybe 12.5% uh, on your pensions or whatever, right? That's money you pay to America. And then you were thinking about coming to Portugal. And so the logic is, hey, with the NHR, they would only pay 10% instead of the 48% that they would be able to pay on the highest tax bracket. But if they do that, then a lot of people wouldn't even come here in the first place. So instead of earning 10%, they earn zero. Yep. Yep. Not to mention that when people come here, um, they interact with the economy, right? They go to restaurants, they go to shops, they go to local businesses, and expats tend to appreciate local businesses a lot more than big stores. Yes. Um, so it would help the community. And for example, we know a restaurant here in uh, Punta de Lima. Uh, it's one of the few restaurants that I know that cooks a salmon properly. And um, it's it's foreigners that keep his doors open because he has higher, a bit higher quality food, right? So it's not the cheapest food that you find um, everywhere. But most of his Portuguese audience goes there and complains about the price. And, oh, don't you have like, you know, the equivalent of fish and chips instead so that I can pay you five bucks and get done with it. Yeah. And, you know, and all of these things, it's it, it, economically speaking, it doesn't make sense. No, but it, then, I, then, I, think you're right. I think your analysis is right politically. It's one of those things, isn't it, where the politicians, politicians can make it look like they're doing something. But actually, it's quite counterproductive and hurtful in the long run. Yeah, because, I mean, a lot of people, Portuguese people, particularly if they don't have as many means, and I know because I've been there myself, um, it's easy to find something to blame. You know, life isn't going the way you want. It's easy to find a boogeyman. It's easy to find a villain. And then, you know, you hear people talking about the foreigners there, so whatever, and then you start blaming them for all of your problems, right? Yeah. And then it's you see the house pricing go up. Yeah. And then you blame it on the foreigners because foreigners have a lot of money and they're buying houses. Yeah. But, you know, I could go all day into why that doesn't make sense to me. But more than that, if you look at the M2 euro uh, money supply, as well as the M2 dollar money supply, you'll see that the way it's increasing correlates a lot more to the home prices than any other factor that I know of. Well said, well said. And we must, it's really important for our community, for the expat, foreigner community, whatever you want to call yourself, immigrant, estrangeros, to, to be aware of this. And it is unfair that the finger is being pointed. I mean, there are, of course, in any community, there are people um, who are sort of, you know, better or worse um, in terms of their behaviour and their impact. But I think it's a, a, a big mistake to be um, 
characterizing the foreigner as the, the, the reason for problems in the country. And I think it's important that, that we lobby and, and respond to that uh, openly and publicly That's as well, point. which I'm, I'm a big point. I'm a big fan of, actually, to have that. Co- it's a difficult conversation, but to have it anyway. Antonio Barbosa is here. Tony Time, everyone. Bodhi Alegria. Happy Monday and a great week ahead. Tony Time, the man in the Mino. Um, and um, I will come back to some of these men in migration things. Um <laughs> Portugal remains golden visa or not. Portugal will remain a top choice to consider moving, retiring, NHR or not. Well said, uh, Tony. And uh, we had two or three foreign buyers a month looking at Portugal. We are now getting three a week and it will continue to be so until Portugal has poor healthcare, education or safety, which won't happen, he says. Thank you very much for that.